Ahoy! A lot of expedition guides on New World either focus on the very basics or are focused on speedrunning. While these are fantastic, I especially enjoy Benedict G's speedrunning content, I think there is a lack of a middle ground. In this video, I'd like to show you how to efficiently clear a Starstone level 10 mutation in a way that still works if you have randoms in your group. The main goal is to show you the most effective pulls and shortcuts that we have found. The run you'll mainly be seeing is a very safe run, I will tell you some alternatives as well, because we were running with a random healer and a random DPS, just to demonstrate that this is also possible when you have multiple randoms. When it comes to gearing for expeditions, you should know the basics regarding gems and stuff already. If you don't, I will make a guide about that in the future anyways. For this particular expedition, you want to have Ancient Ward and Lost Ward, as well as Ancient Bane and Lost Bane ideally. Additionally, if you want to go the extra mile, you want to have a Strike Ward and a Slash Ward Amulet for the bosses. Let's talk about more things as we make our way through the expedition. You want to start the expedition with Ancient Ward and Ancient Bane gear. When entering the first room, you'll have a small group of mobs, but that can easily be pulled down to the next group. This should be possible with most capable tanks that are a little bit experienced with this dungeon. You can pull this group even further into the next group and fight them all together, but that is more of a speedrun strategy that is a lot more risky. You want to clear most of this group, but what will sometimes happen, especially if you don't have Gravwell, is that there is a Javelinier sitting on the outside and kind of doing his own thing. If he's not low enough by the time the other mobs are killed, you can also ignore him and move to the next pool, because then he'll come around the corner and follow you anyways. For this next pool, you can simply group up all of the mobs, since they're all melee anyways. Watch out if you're in the back line as a healer, because the crawlers can hit you pretty hard if they jump you. The next group of mobs, which includes the named mob Sentimas, can either be pulled to the big circle area in front of the bridge or be fought directly on the bridge depending on how comfortable you are with that. During the fight, ideally the group's healer can drop down a sacred and start opening the door while the others are still busy with the mobs, just to speed things up a little bit. In the sealed chamber, you find a very easy to kill group of mobs. To the right side is a small chamber with a laser in front of it that includes one of these star metal nodes that one of your group members can mine while the rest are fighting these mobs. You don't really need five people for these. Next you want to go to the room to the left and crawl under the laser. After the respawn shrine there's a small group of mobs that you can range pull together. This is a very easy group so if you have a dedicated gate opener that is not your tank then that person can already run ahead and start doing the next part. Once you enter the forbidden passage to the right you will find a star metal vein if you care about that and you will have to have at least one person making it to the end of the parkour in order to open the gateway for others. You can have everyone running, but that effectively just increases your risk of someone dying doing so, so I would recommend just having one person and having the healer help out from range. I'll show you how. If you're not the person running, you can just take the lazy route to the left. You just jump down and then you can actually go to the right around the laser. You don't actually have to bother with the timing if you drop to the right. And after that, you can also avoid the second laser, if you want to, by just going around it to the left. So you actually don't have to bother with a single laser if you don't want to. And then you just want to go down to that little ledge. Make sure you don't miss your jump over, depending on what mutation effect that is, and you're not slowed down, so you don't fall down. And then you just wait there until stairs appear. From the perspective of the person running, you want to run down to the middle pathway, and then walk along the right of that and hold block. There's a little ledge that you need to jump over, you can't keep holding block, and if you mess that up, then you will die. But this is a massive shortcut, and it allows you to then just drop down, go around the first laser, and then actually deal with one laser that you have to walk through. When you get to the next part, there will be an archer, but if your healer is ranged attacking them, then the healer can actually aggro them once they have been initially aggroed by you, and you don't have to worry about them at all, otherwise they can be a bit annoying. The other mobs you can simply ignore, and just go over that little ledge, jump over there, and you are at the place where you can open the gate for your teammates, who will then get the stairs, and just one of you needs to hold the torch. Obviously there are different splits on how you can do this, you can also have everyone run this, but generally I think this is an easy and safe method, especially if you have the tank running the whole thing, or the healer pulling aggro, it's very very easy, but that's obviously not a given in every group. The torch allows you to disable the lasers blocking your way, and get to the next room, where you definitely want to touch the respawn shrine. The first laser here is relatively normal and easy to pass through, and after that you have to kill a small group of mobs. The laser after that, however, probably has the highest kill count in the entire expedition. This laser goes fast, sometimes up to three times in a row. 
The safest way to pass this laser is to wait until it goes down fast and then up slowly. In that moment you know it will be slow for a while and that is enough to pass through. You want to make sure that your tank comes with you because the next room, the amphitheater, is a little bit messy. There is a named mob, Iwane, as well as an archer here. Since most of the mobs in this room are melee, ideally you want to pull them towards the archer. Also, if you can, try avoiding the crawlers on the left side of the room. The staircase that follows is an extremely annoying place to fight, so I would recommend just running up and hiding around the corner so that both the archers as well as the crawlers will come to you instead. The crawlers will trickle in very slowly, so if you're confident in your group, you can actually just kill the first cluster of mobs and then move on to the next mob group and just let the crawlers follow you. If your group is not that good, then just clear them first. If your group is very good, you can also just kite all of the mobs into the next cluster, but that's a lot riskier. In this next group, you have a named mob that takes quite a while to kill, which is Irine. And to the right of it is a soul spire that is guarded by a few crawlers. If your tank has a range pull, they can just pull it. Otherwise, you can have your healer pull it, and then someone can mine the soul spire. And also, this is again a fight that takes quite a while. So during that fight, somebody, ideally a healer, can already start opening the next gate. Now we enter the Shattered Obelisk, and this is where Super Omega discovered the absolute guard pull. He runs into the room and throws a hatchet at the archer sitting on top of the stairs, which makes the archers come down just enough to meet with the other mobs, and you have all the mobs grouped up in one place immediately. If your tank is a random or doesn't have a range pull, then you can also stand to the right side of the stairs, and this will pull most of the mobs together most of the time. There are two soul spares together here, one is left of the entrance of the room, and one is to the right of the stairs. Now we have to go to the Fallen Pillar on our left, and this is the moment where I would recommend changing gear from Ancient Ward to Lost Ward. Since Dustown has some mixed mob groups later, I have grown the habit of simply running one weapon with Ancient Bane and one weapon with Lost Bane, so I also save on coatings. So if you're doing that, you don't need to swap weapons here, otherwise you might want to swap to a Lost Bane weapon here. Also, Simon Gray is not really affected by any mutator effects, and he deals strike damage. If you put on a Strike Protection Amulet with Strike Ward, this fight becomes absolutely trivial. Now, Simon Gray has a few mechanics that you want to pay attention to. The first one, the most obvious one, is his Slam. Usually, this one won't kill you, because it doesn't deal enough damage to do that if you have enough Ward gear. However, he can also spawn three mobs around him. These mobs should ideally be killed very, very quickly. There used to be strategy through kiting them as well, but I don't think it's really necessary. What is important is that he doesn't get to consume them. If he consumes the minions, he gets enraged and temporarily deals extra damage, at which point the slam, depending on your gear, can one-shot you if you're a squishy DPS. If you have a strike protection amulet, you can probably just ignore this mechanic though. Simon Gray also has a biobomb which he spits at the tank. You just want to move out of the area where he spat that and the debuff is removed. There are some strategies surrounding kiting him at mid-range so that he doesn't slam behind him, but I don't really think that is all too important, because usually you can pretty much free DPS anyways if you have Strike Ward or simply make sure that he doesn't get enraged. After you kill Simon Gray, make sure to swap out your Strike Protection Amulet if you're using one. The next room is beautifully grouped, so I would recommend just clearing it right then and there. Every pull just makes it more annoying. This also allows one person to pick up Foreman Nakashima's tools without getting bothered by wretches. On the next pull, you can group as much as you feel comfortable. You can just have your tank run into the small group around the corner, or you can kite them to the next group of mobs, which is quite a fair bit more overall. There's also an abomination sitting on the left side of that room behind the stairs, which you can pull into that same group or do separately. Just make sure everyone is on the same page. When the mobs start to clear up, one person can start using the Hallowed Candle at the Spectral Shrine. Former Nakashima is arguably one of the more annoying encounters in this expedition, because this ghost can be affected by mutator effects and those aren't always exactly balanced around boss mechanics. Like for example the nature orb that requires you to go away, but the boss mechanics that require you to stay close. Kind of annoying. There are a few different ways to deal with this boss. I generally think the most relaxed way is having all the DPS in melee range as well as the tank, and then having the healer stand a fair bit away. Foreman Nakashima will cast a chain circle, and as long as you stay in this circle, you're completely fine. Only that no one ever does that, because everyone in this game reflexively dodges. When the chain gets broken, people inside of the circle and close to the circle will be stunned. Sometimes breaking the circle isn't the worst thing though, if otherwise you would die to an AoE that you can't get away from if you don't dodge. After the circle, Nakashima will spawn some ghosts that dash through you twice, but those usually don't do particularly high damage. 
There are ways to tank Nakashima on the stairs that will make the ghosts go diagonal and sometimes miss more. But at least in the groups I was part of that usually caused more trouble than it was worth because then the sacreds would also not work properly and sometimes we get stunned randomly. So, so far I wouldn't recommend doing that. If anyone has any advice on how to do that more effectively, please let me know. Nakashima also has some form of ghost explosion where ghosts come out of its body. In that case, I would recommend creating some distance between you and the boss because the closer you are, the more ghosts you're gonna get hit by and those guys can actually hurt. After the boss, there's a mob to your left that you can usually just ignore. But the next room can either be pulled together with the big group upstairs or you can just clear it right then and there. I usually prefer clearing it in that area because there's some wretches that are just annoying for the healers to deal with. The upstairs room has quite a few stronger and also tankier mobs, so you want to make sure everyone is prepared before you go in. Especially if you're pulling both rooms at once, you're only absolutely ready so that your healer doesn't get wrecked by some wretches. Before you continue, you want to swap back into Ancient Ward and Ancient Bane if you need to. You may also need to reapply coatings. The next group of Ancient has a named mob and you cannot open the chest until the group is killed. In order to speed things up, I highly recommend that one person of your group, one DPS specifically, takes both the key from the chest and the torch. That person then lets the group through the first two gates in front of them and then goes back to the right to disable the gates altogether. Disabling the gates is required for progression in the dungeon so you can't skip it and also there is a life jewel gatherable up there. At the same time, the other players of the group can already start fighting the next mobs. There are multiple options here. You can either just go to the left side of the room and completely ignore the mobs and the gatherable on the right side you can usually still get enough score anyways. If you want to get the soul spire, you can also range pull the archers up the stairs first. Or you can hug the right wall and melee the archers, but the risk of pulling the other group is much higher this way. Of course, you can also fight both groups together. What I would highly recommend here is if you're the tank, make sure that safety officer Richard is facing away from the group. He has a scream attack with a long range in front of him and since everyone is running Ancient Ward at this point, not Lost Ward, that can hurt. The best way to do the next boss up the stairs is to not do it. Since this expedition has a hidden boss that is much much faster to kill, there really isn't any reason to deal with this relatively tanky, relatively high damage guy that's just a repetition of what we had in Lazarus anyways. If you need to fight him, make sure to dodge or block when he slams because that one can hurt. Instead, what you want to do is have the person with the key go straight to the right of him, to the ancient shrine, activate that, and then run. There's a star metal vein on the left side of this room, but that should usually be pretty manageable. If you go a little bit further down, you will get a respawn shrine. At this point, you can clear out some of the mobs, and then you can continue down the path. And here you really have to start considering how many of the mobs you want to clear. There is a soul spire along the path that you probably want to pick up and later down the road there's also another star metal. But there are a bunch of mobs here that you can just ignore and run past. If you need to get a lot of extra mob kills to finish the expedition or to get gold, then obviously you want to pick up some along the way. Ideally the melees because the archers are just a lot more annoying to deal with. But often you will be able to run through the vast majority of this passage. The next part is a little bit trickier and you want to make sure that your tank gets up there as one of the first ones. There are multiple archers and a bunch of spearmen stacked together and the more you can pull them into one group with different abilities, the better, the easier they are going to be to clear. If one or more of your group members are significantly behind, this is one of the more likely wipe spots in the dungeon. When that group is mostly cleared, your healer can peek into the next room and ranged pull burned Becker to make that room a lot easier. This allows you to clear Becker without dealing with the additional mutation effects from another named mob. Burned Becker starts channeling an explosion effect before she dies and she doesn't explode if you kill her quickly enough. After that, if you want to get the full multiplier for named mobs, you want to go to the left first after entering the room. Here you'll find the hidden boss Lemos that you can then pull to the other boss, Erebus. Technically your healer can do that on their own, but if your healer gets stuck somewhere there and then you are dealing with the other named boss already, it could be a bit of trouble. You can also play this safer and clear both of the bosses separately. If you want to play it even safer, you can also open the door behind the boss first and go to the respawn shrine. After touching the respawn shrine, it would be time to put on your slash protection amulet if you have one. Also, if you have a high enough gear score, ranged weapon or anti-heal weapon for your offhand, this is a good moment to put that on. I'll explain that in a second. 
The first phase of Grand Guerrilla Regent is pretty easy. He primarily uses slash attacks with a relatively wide radius, but if you stand a little bit to the left of him, most of these won't hit you as a melee. You want to have everyone close to the boss, including the healer, because occasionally Grand Ghoul will throw you a bone, literally. This bone spawns some extra skeletons and needs to be destroyed if you don't want it to spawn skeletons. If the bone is close enough to Grand Ghoul, then both can be hit at the same time. The second phase is where XI has figured out multiple things to make this boss a lot easier. First, since this is a respawning boss, and that boss spawns with a new health pool, it basically gets a heal. And that means if you apply anti-heal to Grand Ghoul shortly before he goes down in the first phase, that will actually apply to the second phase and he will start with significantly less health from the beginning. So that's what the anti-heal is for. But in the second phase the boss also starts jumping. The normal strategy to avoid this is to just stand close together and then dodge the shockwaves that come out when he slams on the ground. But these are advanced hours. We can do better than that. Grunkul actually has a very interesting mechanic that XR told me about, which is a headshot mechanic. If you shoot Grunkul in the head when he lands from his slam, he will actually get staggered. This not only puts him in a long stagger animation, it also prevents him from doing further jumps. He will just go back to his normal attack phase until the next jump phase. In order to achieve this, you want to hit Grunkul in the face. The back of the head doesn't seem to work, at least not reliably. What we found is that with certain weapons like the throwing hatchet, you have a bit of a harder time actually hitting the hitbox of the head, even if you hit the head. Sometimes it will hit the body instead, it will not trigger the effect. The best weapon that we found to actually trigger the effect is the life staff. However, in my opinion, it's still good to have multiple ranged attackers because the mechanic is not super easy to hit, so that when he jumps, at least one person will likely hit them in the head. Also, because not everyone will always be at the ideal angle to hit. If you manage to do both the anti-heal and the stagger effectively, the second phase of this boss is an absolute joke and super quick. At this point, if you enjoyed this guide so far, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell and also letting me know that you like this. I am considering to make more guides like this for other mutated expeditions, but I'd like to know if there's interest for it. Also, mutation requirements get changed sometimes, so I didn't want to go too hard on the you can skip everything route, but at the moment, at least with how the scoring is right now, you can skip a lot of the required metric, so to speak, the gatherable threshold or named mob threshold, and you can still get gold, especially if you run fast. Since these requirements can change and it can be more difficult to do that with a random group, I didn't want to focus on that. But I do want to point out that not everything that we cleared needs to be cleared to get a gold run. For a more experienced group, I would definitely recommend experimenting with more skips. But here I'll link a video about some data mining for the potential next weapon that you may be interested in. I'd like to take a moment here to thank XR and Super Omega for all of their help with testing this and with this guide and the info in general. And thank you for watching. Big Sloth, out.